Hey y'all, how y'all doing? What's going on? So, uh, about a month ago, I bought these two uh, 4734s, WF-4734s uh, from Epson, right off the clearance website to replace these uh, 3640s that I have. Um, as you can see, they're going through some maintenance right now. still have the 7710, it's from a wide format, but for the most part, I do most of my printings with these two printers here. Um, the only drawback is the ink capacity, in my opinion. Um, it just isn't enough if you're doing a whole bunch of prints. So what I did is I contacted my guys over here at BCH Technologies. I'll put a link in the description for this stuff. But I bought a CISS tank and the uh, elbows and washers to make your own kit. Now, they don't make a kit uh, for the 4734 or the 4730 that I've seen. Um, the ones I did see um, was over in the UK. And they uh, were okay, but I just, I wanted to uh, do something a little bit different. Um, now, what you can do with these, I'm sure if you've seen them before, what people do is they just normally sit them here on the side and uh, run this tube on the outside of the printer into the top of the cartridges for the ink to flow into the cartridges and that'll keep your ink um, flowing into your print head. Uh, what I'm going to do, of course, is be a little bit extra, like I am. I'm going to try to take the side off of here and go through the printer this way and then go into the print head that way. Um, so what I'm going to do is be taking, pretty much taking the printer apart. So, um, again, I don't really need it, but it's just something that I, I really want to experiment with and uh, see if I can do a little bit more hassle-free printing by uh, just filling it once. Uh, instead of filling it up like maybe three times a week, four times a week. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get the side of this printer off and see if I can get the tubing routed in there some kind of way where it uh, where it flows nicely uh, without any kink. So stay tuned, and we'll uh, see if we can get back to it. Okay, so I was able to get the, the carriage unlocked, and uh, you have to do that by... Turn the printer on, and once the carriage unlocks and starts to move by itself, you just unplug the printer. Once you unplug the printer, the carriage is unlocked, and you can pretty much move it side to side like this. So, that was the first step. Uh, now, uh, to get into the side that I want to get on, I'm going to have to take some of these screws off of here. So, we're going to take off uh, one. Uh, there's a few back here. Uh, there's one there. Three. Four, and I think there's yeah, there's one down here as well. If you can, bam, there he is. So I'm gonna take this whole side off and see if I can find a way to go through this, and then uh, route it down under here uh, with the the main print ribbon into the side of the uh, the print head carriage. I've already made a hole here, and then see if I can get it into um into the cartridges that way if i can't um there might be another option where i can just go directly into the print the print head uh, by covering the nozzles with some tubes um and going in that way but hopefully we can go through the cartridges and uh and make it a little bit easier so uh go ahead and pause it here and come all right so we're back up in here and it actually wasn't hard at all to get this out of this panel off of here there was a total of um there's a total of six screws all together let's count them out there's one um two and the rest of them are on the back three four there's five and then there's one down here actually there's six so there's all six and then this guy just kind of lift back on here and it hinges out this way so all of this is exposed now so the trick now is to imagine this guy on the outside and then we're going to try to route the tubing through here some kind of way to get into this track here but we can go behind the print head, through the side, and then to the top. 
and that way we're able to close the printer all the way down instead of kind of having it open so that the tubes can move freely through the uh, so they can move freely through the printer so what we're going to do now is uh, pause it and I'm going to try to find a good route to get in here and, and run mm -hmm. the tubing through here stay tuned okay guys now before I get the route and the tubing through I want to show you the uh, the spot that I found if you look on the outside there's going to be this little communications card here I'm not sure which communications it is could be Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or something but I know it's not hardwired all that stuff sits over here so it's some kind of communications part anyway if you look in there there's a little slot right up in there and you could probably get the tubing through there so what I'm gonna do is move and put this piece of uh, piece of folded up paper through here and uh, see if we can get it routed out through here so if you look there's a perfect spot for it to get in there and get on the back side of that wall where that ribbon sits. So what I'm gonna do is connect my tubing to this piece of paper that I just threaded through here and then we're gonna just pull um, pull the rest of this through here and route it through there that way. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and charge my battery up some so I can record the rest of this video and go to sleep, so. All right guys, I'm gonna try to do this and hold this at the same time. So if you look right here, what I did is I took a soldering iron and just kind of made a hole on the side of the carriage here. And the plan is to get that tubing from behind this behind the carriage. It's going to go on the side and through. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you all that uh, before I get all the tubing routed through here. So that when you see the tubing come through here, you're not like, how did he get that through there? So I had to take a soldering iron and pretty much burn a hole wide enough for the tube to uh, to fit through the side here, um, like so. So the tube's gonna come through, gonna come through here like this. Of course, I can't get it right because I'm trying to do every damn thing with one hand. So can't get it right, but that's the idea. We're gonna go through here, and then we'll be on the top of the tube. So I'm gonna stop it here, and then come back and uh, show you how I have it routed through. Okay, so I was able to get the tubing routed through that port, uh, that access uh, hole that I had showed y'all. Uh, the tubing is now riding all the way on the back side of that wall, down past the carriage, or past the carrier. And um, on the outside, uh, behind it, on the back side of this main cable. Now, I had to take a piece of tape to tape up the tubing. Now, on the inside, the tape is reversed so that this tubing can slide uh, in and out along this guy. So this thing, this piece of tape, see if I can get it to do it. This whole thing slides. You can't really see it, but it slides. And that's going to allow this carriage to move back and forth throughout the entire printing process without getting snagged up on anything. And so the tubes are pretty much gonna be connected to that main printer cable back here, that main ribbon cable, if you can see it. It follows that, the bend of that cable perfectly. So it'll allow it to go all the way to the extreme left and to the extreme right without getting snagged up on anything. Everything is moving freely. So we got the route the way we want it. Uh, now we have to put the cartridges in the, the elbows in and also figure out how I'm gonna mount this tank uh, to the side and get this out the front of the, uh, of the front of the cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this, put the phone back on the charger and come back when it's uh, when a little bit more completed. Okay guys, so we got the tube in, uh, route it through. Everything's uh, moving without any kind of snags. We got our tube taped up to our main ribbon. Again, it's double taped so that the inside of this part moves freely. So that the end part of this tube moves freely inside of that tape. I've uh, done it twice. Again, right there in the middle so that it can reach both the left and the right side 
um, through on this side where the tank is at. I got it up here temporarily with some duct tape until I get the right fasteners that I want. But uh, this is where we're going to fill and uh, this is where the tank's going to be. I have it routed through a hole that I miscalculated very badly on um, and went the wrong way with the cut. So um, we're going to cover that up with duct tape, but this is where the tubes go in. So what we're going to do now or next is uh, fill it and prime it and see if we can get them to flow into these into these cartridges and then we'll have a complete CISS um, set up on this uh, 4734. Um, it's starting to actually look like it's supposed to be there. Again, you could actually do this by just throwing something on the side, putting your tank on the side, running the tubes over the side, and propping this up a little bit. Uh, once you prop it up, you'd have to put uh, some pressure down on your uh, on your micro switch here to uh, let the printer know that it's closed, even though it's open. So. Uh, with this configuration, though, once we get these uh, pouring into the ink tanks or pouring into the cartridges here, we can actually take and close this down so we can still use the scanner. Oh. So we can still use the scanner, which I know don't use at all. Um, and it also just, it just looks a little bit cleaner. It looks like it's supposed to be there um, as opposed to something just kind of sitting over here on the side. Um, kind of just sitting there sucking up ink so uh again looks like it's supposed to be there we'll get it filled up we'll get it primed and see if we can get it uh get it going this one we're going to leave it the way it is i'll probably just run black and white prints out of this um and uh, we'll use this one for the full spectrum here so we'll get everything back together um get everything turned on to make sure everything works properly without any kind of errors and then uh we'll get the tanks filled up and primed and uh, see if we can get this thing uh, printing. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're able to get the cartridges filled and primed um, with the CISS kit. Um, <clears throat> once you make sure that your your tubing is uh, routed properly and not snagging on anything, I was actually snagging on this uh, this sensor down here, so I had to redo my little band aid show you what I mean by that band-aid so what you do is you take a piece of um, a piece of duct tape uh, you're gonna cut it in half or rip it in half and then you're gonna take a piece of one of those pieces and you're gonna rip it off and then, so now you'll have a piece that's shorter than the other piece and you're gonna take that and then you're gonna make a band-aid by putting the sticky parts together kind of get the idea of that and then when you wrap it around <clears throat> into a circle or around that ribbon to hold your tubes it'll be able to move on the inside of that because it's not sticky but the outside part is stuck together so that's what we got going on here and if you look let's see if I can do it I can get it to move <clears throat> inside of that inside of that piece of tape because on the inside of that piece of tape is just a reverse piece of tape. So it kind of makes it like a band-aid. I'm also gonna put a piece right here to hold up this ribbon cable, give it a little bit more support now that it has an extra weight by that tube on it. So I'm gonna put this uh, piece of tape here and I'm gonna come back. Okay, so now that we got this piece of tape up here supporting that ribbon, uh, we can move back and forth uh, unimpeded from left to the right. So, got everything in there. <clears throat> now, um, then I use this uh, this tubing support here. I'll put a link in the description where you can get this. Um, put this tubing support on my cartridges here and then ran the tubing through to the elbows. Cut it the length and uh, cleaned everything up and made sure these tubes lay flat you don't want them to go up like this or else they'll hit the corner of this so you want to uh, put it into your elbow and make sure it lays flat now to prime these you remove these uh, you're gonna well first you gotta put your elbow in where your fill hole uh, your fill plug used to be 
Um, you put your washer in first, then you put your elbow through the washer, and then you put the tube onto the elbow. Um, once you do that, it's connected to the tank. So we put all of that together, put this clip on here to make sure it lays flat, got the tubes into the elbows. <clears throat> um, and uh, what you wanna do is uh, to prime it, you would uh, fill your tank halfway. Um, these are the fill plugs here. So you fill your tank halfway. Um, these are your air, your uh, vent holes here. Um, and once you fill it halfway, you close it up. It's now primed, the tank is now primed. Um, and then I take a syringe and then you draw up until you start to see ink. And once you see ink, you put a plug on your vent hole. So in the regular configuration where you just have the regular um, refillable cartridges, you'll have your fill plug here and then you keep this vent plug open. But in the uh, CISS configuration, you're going to, um, once your ink starts flowing out of here by pulling up on the syringe, you're going to actually plug your vent hole because you're going to be vented at the source of the ink back here. So a little bit different setup with the vents uh, and the plugs and things like that. But once you get it flowing, it's pretty easy. So we got all that together. We got this flowing back and forth now. What that now allows us to do is take this cover and oh, oh, plugs in here. You'd be able to take this cover and close it all the way down and still be able to print because it's out of the way. Um, what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a piece of tape and cover this guy up so that that doesn't look so bad. So now you look at it, like I said, it kind of looks like it's always supposed to have been there. So now we'll do a couple of head cleanings, get a nozzle check going, and then we'll see if we can get some prints going. And uh, yeah, so yeah, um, stay tuned. Okay, so we're able to get the lines purged out and uh, get some uh, print head cleanings done. We got the uh, got the colors purged and everything's moving uh, the way it's supposed to at this point. Um, got some prints going for some customers right now, actually. Um, as you can see, it's drawing from the tanks like it's supposed to. Uh, and again, if we run it through this uh, printer the way that we did it so that the uh, the tube is actually run through the printer and not on top of it if we do it that way we can actually close this lid down and continue to print um, with the lid closed whereas normally you would have uh, the tubes running on the outside of this guy and this thing would be propped up um, we'll go ahead and open this up for the remainder through here we still got the uh, I don't have a piece of paper jammed in here but um, here we just have the regular uh, refillable cartridges going on this uh, version of the printer going on so yeah we got both of them printing right now and uh, like I said the CISS kit it's worth it I think I paid a total for the parts all together I paid like a little bit over 30 bucks because I got the expedited shipping and I also got the longer elbows that I didn't need. I wound up cutting those elbows, but I'll put the link for the shorter ones in the description. All right, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you guys can uh, put this to use if you need to. I think these printers are pretty decent um, for the most part. Like I said, the only drawback in my book, because I do uh, a lot of printing daily, was the capacity and when you put this tank on there I think each one of these chambers holds I think 75 milliliters of ink so this should at least get me through <laughs> the week <laughs> or something like that maybe a two weeks or so but anyways um, I hope this helps man uh, you guys keep printing if you guys have any questions you can always hit me up dynamitegorilla at gmail.com or you can uh, go to dynamitegorilla.com and uh, hit the contact info or the contact page and you can get a hold of me that way. Alright, thanks.